On this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, a four-day work week is the longest week ever. We will discuss. Uh, we're also going to talk about kegerators and soccer and tigers and bears. And lions, oh my. Hey, John Wick, Chapter 3, Parabellum. I think that's a thing. Is that a thing? It is a thing. You know what's not a thing no. anymore? But, Game of Thrones. Oh, you had to go there. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 214 for Thursday, the 23rd of May, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we are definitely missing the thrones, even though it hasn't even been a full cycle since we last saw our last episode. Hey man, how you doing, dude? Uh, I'm good now, man. Uh, long week. Yeah? Only four days of a work week. Uh, it's a four-day weekend, which is amazing because... Uh, Whew. Oh boy! Like I think, um, I think Monday was about three weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds about right. Um, I, 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 weekends are just everything just kind of blends in because I do more work on the weekends than I do during the week now. So, right, right. Um, yeah. Thus is the uh, the the freelancer intern life, I guess. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, was it one of those weeks where everybody was like freaked out because it's four week, four days only? So they would try to shove it in full of stuff, and by the time everything got done, there's like, oh, we have all this extra time. We'll shove in more shit. Yeah, uh, you would think so. I didn't even know it was a four day work week until like Wednesday. Oh, or two the Tuesday at least. So you thought I realized. you thought you were just shitty slammed. Yeah, I had we had uh, visitors this week, and so I had to play host, and we had to do we had to prepare briefings and meetings and uh, site visits, and yeah, no, uh, it was nonstop. No, uh, yeah, no, not so much. Hey, um, <laughs> guess what they had on sale? I don't know if they still are on sale, but I'm probably should probably find out. Um, on sale at Best Buy. Best Buy, um, hammers. No, no, that'd be Lowe's. Now they, oh, now, oh. now that Lowe's uh, contracts or owns or whatever with Craftsman, they've got oh. even more hammers. Oh, okay, all right. Um, uh, you said Best Buy. Best yes, Buy. Best um, buy. Um, steaks. Uh, no. 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 Um, um, uh, button-up shirts. Only if you're an employee. <laughs> and even um, then best only... buy. I don't have a Best Buy store here. You, I forget you, what they are. You do not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, my uh, I I they they had uh, kegerators on sale for a hundred dollars off. <gasps> Ooh. So instead okay. of being five fifty for the Insignia brand, I know. Look at me straight in the eyeballs right now. If you're watching this in video, Insignia sucks. I get it, but you know what D sucks even worse? Not having fresh beer. So. <laughs> Um, and it arrived today. So the catalyst for this whole thing, I'm, I'm having my retirement ceremony on the 7th of June, hope, hoping to live stream it. Um, I'm still trying to work out the, the details there, but hoping to live stream it so that we can share that. Damn, I'm just burping everywhere. Um, so we can share that with, uh, with our audience and with people that might give a shit. Um, and what is a maintenance going away retirement without a keg? Um, that doesn't even make sense. Right. I don't understand the question. So <laughs> now when, when, for maintenance personnel, for aircraft maintenance, when they retire and there's a, you know, a keg round, when is it usually around? Uh, the entire time. During the ceremony or just post? <laughs> just post typically. Well, well, see, I'm not doing a post party. Okay. So I'm going to have my keg there at the retirement ceremony. Oh, yes. oh, Okay. I so, par, part of the ceremony is going to be a request for everyone to charge their glasses prior to the ceremony beginning. They can charge okay. it with uh, with, and charging your glass in military speak just means making sure you have something in your glass to toast with. You do not want to be caught with an empty glass during a toast. Right, right. Um, I'll have soft drinks, water, um, uh, kitty drinks because there might be a few kids that are there, um, and beer and some liquor. And we will all have charged glasses, and it will be a fun ceremony. I already checked the protocol. There's nothing saying you can't have alcohol at a retirement ceremony, so fuck it. I'm doing it. And uh, I've got a few toasts I'm going to make while, uh, while I'm up there. I still have to write those, so that should be fun. But 
I was thinking, like, I don't want to get a half keg, like, or a quarter keg, or even a, a, a sixter, or a six, yeah, a sixter, whatever, whatever the hell they call them, like the one sixth of uh, a keg, uh, uh, a pony, the hot dog shit, yeah. Um, oh yes, okay. I, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to get one of those because that's just that's not the maintenance way. But I don't want to get a big old keg and not be able to store it somewhere and keep it cold. And I'd already talked to Rick about getting a kegerator, and she was like, "No, I'm not buying you a kegerator for your retirement." And I said, "Okay," so I bought it myself. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> and I was thinking about it. I was like, "Man, the keg is like 150 pounds. Like that's going to be a lot to bring down here to my office because that's obviously where the keg's going to go." But here's the thing: I have to bring it down to my office at 150 pounds. I take it back out to my truck at 40. Valid. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. So, yep. Uh, keg Raider should be here next week. I'm hoping to uh, to get an Alaskan Amber uh, keg handle or a, a tap handle because yep, that's yep. exactly what I'm going to be getting and putting in there. And, uh, yeah, so this th- this will be one of the last weeks I have one of these during this show because it arrived today. Oh, my. That is awesome, dude. I Oh, man. Yeah, I'm a little bit jealous of you. Uh, I actually, I, I do have a kegerator, but it's for uh, it, it's it's for homebrew, mm-hmm. and it's got uh, it's got four taps on it, and it's for the it's for the smaller kegs. That's the kind of the design of it because it's made out of a like a regular full size kitchen refrigerator. Uh, so the idea is to have four of those uh, the flat ones, the pancakes. Yeah, the well, not a pan, but the 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 skinny cylinders. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're called. Yeah, um, so you can have four different types of beer on tap, which is pretty awesome. I'm hopefully gonna put that thing to use in the coming months. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes, but um, yeah, no, that's kegerators are awesome, dude. Yeah, um, I'm I'm pretty pretty jazzed about it. Even for a cheap one, just with one tap, because I could have gotten the two tap one. I was like, you know what? I'm not bothered with all that. I just th- if I was gonna have one beer on tap, I know what it would be, and it's easy to get up here. So we're just gonna go with that. And uh, yeah, so uh, bring on the gut, man. I'm gonna be drinking some fresh beers very soon. <sighs> very nice. Uh, if you if you wanted to work that gut off, you would probably do some kind of exercise, like um, I don't know, soccer. Uh, well, so I've found that just watching soccer is all the exercise I need on a daily basis. Luckily, the Alaska State Championships are going on right now, and my daughters, uh, Sterling and Madison, are in the well, – they, they, they went in at the top seed. Oh. Today was the first game, and they won 4-0. to zero. Tomorrow they play one of their uh, arch rivals, um, Diamond. The, that's not the diamond without an A. That's D I M O N D because that's how they spell diamond. Um, diamond High School is tomorrow uh, in afternoon, and then if they win that, the championship is sun- Saturday night. So, really hoping to uh, to rock all that out, man. Really excited. It's been fun. Yeah, that's that's pretty great. In Alaska, though, there's there's what like three teams? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, only two. No, well. Which which makes the playoffs really weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> no, there are there are plenty. They divide them up into between Division One and Division Two, and Division One has eight hundred and fifty one or more students, and then all the Division Two have eight fifty or fewer. And yep. there's some schools that came up here because they lead their division. They've only played three games like all year because they like Kodiak is an island. Like you have to fly to go to any of the schools, so nobody ever they don't ever play anybody. Um, but they made the, the, the division two championship this year. So they're, they were playing when we left. Uh, I was starting to thinking, man, like every teenage girl from that Island is here to play soccer today. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, there's a couple, there's quite a few towns that are like that. The, there's a lot of, a lot more division two than there are division one. Um, luckily colony is division one. So it's the kind of the big leagues and there are, I think, I want to say there are 12 teams in their division and it's broken into two conferences. No, it's, it's eight and eight. So it's 16 teams in the division, eight each conference. And then the top two from each conference go. And then the next two highest scores go. And it's the whole three points for a win, one point for a tie, zero points for a loss kind of thing. And oh, okay. Uh, okay. yeah, well, just like, uh, just like hockey does, I believe. And, uh, Neat. 
Yeah, they, they went in number one seed, so they took out the number eight seed today, and we'll see how that goes from there. All right. Sounds exciting, man. Yeah, it's fun. Um, uh, have, have you watched any of the John Wick films? Yes, one and two. I was going to see three last weekend, but it didn't. It, it, things got in the way. Maybe see it later on this weekend, but uh, real quick tonight, I'm going to go... Uh, I've been invited on a daddy da- daddy daughter date, and mm. Amber and I are going to go see Aladdin. Very cool, very yeah. cool. Uh, if we make it to the movies this weekend, is probably going to see. We're, it's probably to see Brightburn. Mm, that that came out this week. Uh, yeah, started oh, nice. today, I believe. Nice. Um, but did you go see John Wick? I did, man. John Wick three. If you like the first two, <laughs> you're going to love the fuck out of this one. <laughs> Um, can, can you say gratuitous violence? <laughs> the movie, the movie is, I mean, of course it is right. Of course, yeah. gratuitous violence. Uh, the movie is, I believe two hours and 10 minutes long. And I think there's about an hour and 50 to an hour and 55 minutes of straight gratuitous violence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is insane, man. The, the gunplay and the like hand to hand, like melee fights, uh, knife fights. I was uh, I was listening to the Daily Zeitgeist a couple of days ago, and they were talking about it. And apparently, and I don't know how much this is true versus how much I remember versus how much is pertinent to this conversation. Mm-hmm. The whole concept behind John Wick was, hey, we have all these action action stars, or it's not stars, but all these uh, stunt stars mm-hmm. and stunt directors and stuff like that. But they always want to do all these stunts, and the director's like, no, or the producer's like, no, we can't, we can't afford that, we can't do this, can't do that, it didn't fit in the story, blah blah blah. blah. What if we took a bunch of stunt directors and stunt actors and had them create a movie the way they wanted to? Oh, totally. The the director of John Wick is Keanu Reeves' stunt double from The Matrix. Right. So the whole the whole John Wick series has been we don't give a shit about the story. We're going to give you the most shallow story possible. But we just want <laughs> action all the time. It's still a pretty good story. Right. Because, I mean, <laughs> that, that's the, first that's the problem. Especially. That's the like, problem is they came up with a very shallow story. You yeah. know, this guy's a secret assassin or whatever, and they try to somebody wants to double cross him. They they try to they, they try to take him out, but they end up killing his, his or yeah, they kill his dog, which is the only thing he has remaining from his long lost love from a few years ago or whatever, and that sends him on a rampage. That's the story. Yeah, something like that. Um, what I find fascinating, well, first of all, the the continental and the idea of the high table and just that that secret society of assassins is mm. fascinating to me. Right, that is brilliant. But th- that's that's that I- what brought us into the professional and got us watching. Uh, uh, what was the other assassin movie? Um, oh damn, I don't remember. But uh, it's called John Wick Two. <laughs> But no, like the professional was, was had that kind of mystique to it too, where they were all they were communicating by different different methods and stuff like that. And uh, the old dude got Natalie Portman all wrapped up in it. Was that the professional? I think that was a professional. I, um, I mean, that is the one with Natalie Portman, but I, I don't remember. I, it's been like twenty years since I've seen Leon or the yeah. professional, as it's known in the states. Um, I don't know, uh, but the the other thing that I find fascinating about John Wick, the the trilogy, all takes place within like three weeks or something like that. Hmm. Like it is all back to back. Like you said, you saw John Wick two. Mm-hmm. John Wick three ends like I don't f- five minutes maybe after John Wick two ends. Yeah, it is immediately after. And, and that's that's how John Wick two is, right? Like it. It, yeah, it's, it's like, like it's, like, it's later, like a couple days later. Yeah, or yeah. As I was gonna say, it's like later yeah. that week because he yeah. he goes back and the people remember him and have just heard about him and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, Baba Yaga. That is crazy. So it's good though, uh, right? Oh yeah, it's good. If 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 you like John Wick or you just like uh, good fight choreography, yeah, this is your movie. <laughs> Here's a question I have for you now. We all know that like certain bands 
I guess you can have a different opinion on it, but certain bands have a reputation for being shitty or whatever. Like Nickelback, I like their music, but like they're they're the the classic. Oh, every year love Nickelback's shitty, and, and right, I think right. Chad Chad Kroger is a dick. But uh, I like the music. I've seen them live. They did a good show. Like I don't have any problems with them. Mm-hmm. Did you do you realize that there are a lot of people that don't like Keanu Reeves? Yes, like yes, a lot of people. Yes, and and they're very adamant. Like he's the Nickelback of actors, right? For them. But but yeah. apparently, but according to all people that that have ever met him and known known him, he's like the nicest dude ever. Right. He does a lot of work for charity. He's a. I think he's a pretty good actor. Yeah, you could say he can only do two roles, but guess what? He does those roles extremely well. And by the way, have you seen Clint Eastwood? Like right. he's exactly the same character every single time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Clint he, Eastwood's really good. <laughs> he. Yeah, but yeah, but he plays one character really good. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically, you yeah. know, like I, I just, except for that time that he was the old racist man, like that was slightly different. It was I the same know. character but racist. <laughs> <laughs> he might have been more in character there. We don't know. <laughs> that, that might not have been an act. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I man, Keanu Reeves. Like, I don't, I don't know that anything that I've seen him in that he didn't knock out of the park and play exactly the way that role should have been played. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure Three or whatever they're calling it. Yeah, uh, Bill Bill and Ted Face the Music. That's what it's called. Yeah, that's coming out next year, I think. Yep. I I just even Bill and Ted One and Two, even the second one, everybody everybody was down on the second one. I thought the second one was great. It just it's it's not supposed to be heavy fare. It's you know it's just a fun movie, and that's exactly what I get out of it. And I fucking love watching Keanu Reeves in the Matrix. Man, he played that role perfectly. He went into it looking completely ignorant and came out of it looking badass as hell. Yeah. So. Whoa. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I wonder how well John Wick did in theaters this week. Um, let's find out. Welcome to your movie draft minute presented by Diamond Club TV for the week of May 20th, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay, brought to you by Sidewalks, keeping kids off the streets. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Ritual Misery is in last place with The Dog's Journey bringing in $9.7 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming is in fifth place with $21.9 million. Team The Bond Squad is in fourth place with $42.9 million. Team Game Night is in third place with $138.1 million. Team Have a Drink is in second place with $727.1 million. And in first place with $69 million from John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum, it's Team Movie Party with $1 one billion seventy four point four million dollars. That's your stream team movie draft minute. All totals are accurate as of May twenty second, two thousand nineteen. So, a dog's journey has made nine point seven million dollars, which is exactly eight point seven million dollars more than we expected. So, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, it made more than uh, twelve dollars in a taco. I think is what I predicted yeah. it was going to make. No, uh, uh, that's, so that's yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's fine. Good. We're I, on the board. We're I, on the board. I, I, I'm feeling up, man. I'm feeling up. Like I'm ready. I think we. I think we got this. I think we got this. We've we're been gonna... we've been playing this game for like two and a half months now, and we're finally on the board. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, this is a good feeling, <laughs> man. And the next two movies are ours. Uh, yeah. We've got Aladdin, yep. as you mentioned. So you're gonna you're gonna contribute to our 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 uh, pile of money right well, there. Well, yeah. And uh, then we got Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and I believe that one's gonna make a pile of money too, because I'm I'm gonna dump a bunch of money into that one. <laughs> uh, so um, I don't know. It's, uh, gonna, it's gonna make seventy eight dollars. Seventy five yeah, of those we, are gonna be yours. We are we're gonna slide into fourth place, I think, next week. Hmm. Uh, we're definitely gonna pass DKG. Uh, oh man, Bod's the the, Bod, the hype about it, sure. the hype around Aladdin is really really hyping up. It's really getting up there so um yeah it must be hyped around kids you're around kids a lot um oh, kids and people with kids it's probably uh, pretty up there in the yeah. hype steel um and, and, i'm around and, a lot of boring adults so and, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna go watch it with my 19 year old daughter <laughs> <laughs> hey kids uh, is kids right <laughs> yeah exactly uh my 19 year old's a kid too so oh man um you know about kids. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a way to tie that into our patron of the week, Justin Frazier. Um, he gets giddy as a as a child when he talks about beer over on the Have a Drink show. Well, I was thinking more like all the other folks on Have a Drink show recently had kids, and that leads him like the sole kid of his own. So, oh yeah, he's he's like the he's not old enough to have kids because he's still a kid, right? Uh, uh, but he can drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure how that works. Um, the reason we're talking about Justin is because we want to say thank you, Justin, for yes. being a patron of the Ritual Misery podcast over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Justin, he gives a fuck because Justin gives a buck. Hell yeah. Uh, he's also lucky enough to get all of the extra stuff that we put in there. Yep. Uh, extra episodes. We've we've got special interviews. We've got uh, extended versions of the shows with post-show and pre-show. Uh, you never know what you're going to find over there. So check it out. Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. And for the Have a Drink folks, I've got your package about half packed up. <laughs> I, Which I, is a quarter more packed up than it was a few weeks uh, ago. It's infinitely more packed up than it was a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, yeah, I got the other two packages I need to send out. I got those sent out this week, so now I have just the boxes I need for their package, and I can finally get it mailed out. Excellent. So. Um, Amos, let's play a game. Uh, do we have to? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, we do. All right, fine. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kid's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. That's your cue to start talking, dude. Oh, it would help if I could hear the music on my end. I can't oh. hear it. <laughs> but anyway, our game this week is called You Win or You Die. Why, oh why, might we have a game called You Win or You Die? Uh, obviously, that is a line from Game of Thrones mm. uh, by Cersei Lannister. I think in season one, right? Uh, I think she said that in season start. one, episode seven. Right on. Uh, yeah, so I am going to test your I knowledge. I don't know if that's actually true. I I know it's either seven or eight because spoiler warning: Ned dies in nine, and it's definitely before he dies because she's not talking to a piked head. Right. Yeah. So exactly. I'm pretty sure it's seven, and then yeah, I'm pretty. I'm I'm gonna go with seven. Seven, Alex. So what is I'm seven? Going to, I'm going to ask you questions about the Game of Thrones TV show. Oh. You have a chance to get two points on each question. Mm. I'm going to ask you the question, and if you answer it without multiple choice, you will get two points. Okay. If you answer it correctly, but I gave you the options, then you get one point. Okay. All right. All right. So it cost You're... me a point to have the multiple choice read to me. It costs you the chance for an additional point. <laughs> um, so, yeah. All right. So your first question is, what is the name of the Iron Banks representative played by Mark Gaddis? Ooh, I'm going to need the choices on that one. I figured you might. Your choices are Corin Halfhand, Zero Zone Daxon, Howard from the Halifax, or Tycho Nestoris. Tycho Nestoris. You know you are Air Force when two of the answers are just completely wrong right off the right. bat. Yep, exactly. Uh, who is responsible for creation of the Night King? Um, the Children of the Forest. That is two points for you, sir. And I was gonna, I was wondering if you wanted the actual name. Her name is Leaf, but you don't know for certain that it's her that actually does the action. It's just someone that looks like her. But they all kind of right. look alike. So. Oh, I was going to say, so the, the children all look alike, right? The, is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying right now, that the, the, all the children look alike? Yes. <laughs> okay. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There has been some criticism in the last few seasons about um, the um, – um, yep. Okay. Uh, your third question. In the TV show, what was Hodor called 
before he got his tragic door holding nickname. Wallace. Should I take my options? I I'm gonna give you your 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 options here. Uh, the the choices are Willis, Willis, Horace, Maris, or Gladys. Willis it is indeed. <laughs> All right, your fourth one. Mm-hmm. Who was the leader of the Golden Company Cell Swords when Danny ransacked King's Landing? Oh, General Smooth Hair. Is that your final answer? <laughs> I'm going to need my options. <laughs> Your choices are Wes Borland, Harry Strickland, Harry Kiefer Sutherland, S- Go ahead. or Robert Westland. Harry Strickland. Is- it was the only name that actually sounds like a real name. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was kind of leaning toward Kiefer Sutherland, but yeah. that, just, that just sounds like a crazy name. It sounds like some shit you made up. Mm-hmm. All right, number five. This is a gimme. Danny's dragons, or or were, called Drogon, Viserion, and who? Danny's dragons are, or were, Ray called Gone. Drogon, Syrian and Ragon. Ragon. Is mm-hmm. that your final answer? Sure. Or would you like your choices? <laughs> it's either Ragon or Ragal. But Ragal okay. it is. It is indeed Ragal. Yeah. Um, yes. All right. So uh, speaking of pronouncing things wrong, I'm most likely going to pronounce this actor's name wrong. Good. Ewan Rion who played Ramsey Bolton was almost cast as which character? Oh. By, by almost cast, do you mean originally? He was strongly considered by the casting director for the role of who? Um, before he was subsequently cast as Ramsey Bolton, after another actor got the role in question. Give me my options. I think I know, but I'm not. Uh, I'm less. All than right. 30%. Your choices are Jon Snow, mm. Gendry, Podrick Payne, or Rob Stark. Still a chance. Twenty-five percent chance. I'm gonna go with Jon Snow. <laughs> you say Jon Snow? Yeah. And you get one point for that answer. That's that's what I thought. I thought I saw that somewhere or read that somewhere, but I wasn't sure. And then you gave me the other option that I was that I was thinking of, which was uh, yeah, that would Gendry. be a very different, um, very different take on the character. I thought that it was uh, Rob. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, because Rob, Rob to me seems like he's exchangeable. Like you could change out the actor, and it'd still be, <laughs> it'd still be kind of the same experience watching uh, it. You could almost eliminate Rob's story, and it'd still be the same show. I I could play Rob. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be as compelling. Yeah. Uh, number seven. Uh huh. <laughs> Who said? I don't plan on knitting by the fire while men fight for me. Oh, uh, uh, Leanna Mormont. Two points for that. I don't plan on knitting by the fire. No, I can't do it. No, you can't. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna try to be Ginny on Let's Talk About Thrones Just... and try to imitate all of the British accents. <laughs> um, okay, number eight. Which body part did Kit Harrington say was in severe pain when filming the dragon riding scenes in season eight? I don't know. All right. Your choices are his right arm, his right knee, his right shoulder, his right testicle. I'm going to go with right testicle because why not? 
Indeed, that is what Kit Harrington declared was in pain. I figured there'd be more questions about the show and fewer behind the scenes shit, but okay. What what else you got for me? <laughs> it's a mix. It's a mix. All right, number nine. Uh-huh. This is the hardest question in the thing, or at least it was for me. Okay. Which UK drama had Hannah Murray, who played Gilly, and Joe Dempsey, who played Gendry, appear in together before Game of Thrones? So Gilly and Gendry, uh-huh. or more so the actors who played those two characters, were in a show together prior to Game of Thrones. Uh-huh. What was that show? <laughs> Would you like your choices? Why not? <laughs> sure. Okay. The options are Misfits, Skins, Holly Oaks, Sugar Rush. Sugar Rush. <laughs> Holly Oaks. Yeah, it's uh, Skins. Skins. Oh, that's, that's the last one I would have gone with, too. <clears throat> All right, what else uh, you got? Got one yeah. more? Your final question. Dun, dun, dun. Which of these characters is dead? Jock and Hagar, Nymeria the direwolf, Hot Pie, or Edison Tullet? Edison Tullet? <laughs> Who the hell's Edison Tullet? You probably know him as Ed or Dolores Ed. Oh, Dolores Ed. From uh, the Night's Watch. The Night's Watch. Lord Commander Ed. Um, or is it acting Lord Commander? No. Was he officially elected? Yeah, or did John you, just say, uh, you in charge now, sir? Yeah, but they didn't really have a, a quorum anyway, so it's not like they could have gotten the votes with only 15 people left alive. I mean, he could. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who knows? Uh, you got 13 out of Apostle possible 20 that's not bad bad at all sir that's a shit maybe that is bad 13 times 5 is 50 65 that's 65 that's passing okay good yeah yeah these get degrees right yeah these get yeah. these what <laughs> all right so let's go into our final edition of the game of thrones deadpool mm. uh, this was the little game that we played to Try to predict who lived and who died. Mm-hmm. Um, this week I got most of them right. I ended up with a total of nineteen points for the season. Mm. I ended up with a total of twenty. Um, and I think all the ones that I got wrong, I knew differently. Right, the episode before they died. <laughs> Yeah, I, I noticed that over the couple over the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, because we would talk about like, what do you think is going to happen next? And then you're like, damn it, I wish I would have changed my sheet. <laughs> uh, yeah, what really fucked me on points was I chose three people to turn into whites that did not turn into whites, so I lost my points. Yeah, um, I, that happened to me with two of them. So, the mountain and Theon. Yeah. So yeah, oh, that happened. By the way, spoiler alert: if you uh, if you if if you're lame and you haven't caught up and care, and if you don't care, then it doesn't matter that we're spoiling something you don't care about. See how that works. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. <clears throat> so let's run down these. Jon Snow. I had him as dead, and obviously not. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Um, Sansa Stark very well alive. Got that one right. Arya Stark is the same. Yep. Same. Same. Bran Stark, yep, um, I picked him to die because I again my original idea was that he would cancel out the Night King and they, they would be um, uh, uh, light to darkness, uh, negative to positive, and cancel each other out. And that did not happen. He lived. I got it wrong. I got that right. I got um, everything in that list. I had right except for Jon Snow. I said that he would die. He lived. Um, next up, we have Cersei Lannister, Jaime Lannister, Tyrion Lannister. Uh, Cersei and Jaime died. Mm-hmm. Tyrion lived. I got all three of those right. Same here. Then we have Daenerys Targaryen. I got that wrong. I said she would die. Mm. So I got it right. <laughs> I also said bonus questions. Uh, the bonus question number one was, is Daenerys pregnant? I said no, so I got a point for that. I don't think anybody should get points for that. <laughs> 
because it was never definitively. It wouldn't even alluded to having an answer. Yeah, exactly. Why so, she was not pregnant? It was inconsequential, but never definitive. So, but whatever. I still won. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. Yara Greyjoy, Theon Greyjoy. Um, I said they were both going to die. I was half right. Uh, I got I got both those correct. However, I picked Theon for a white, and that did not happen. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Melisandre is next. I said that she would live. I was dead wrong about that. Yes, you were, and I told you that as soon as you picked it. Um, and then Jorah Mormont, uh, I picked him for dead. Um, I did as well, but I didn't get the point. I thought he was going to be a white. Mm. Yeah. How next about the time? hound in the mountain? I picked both of them to be dead, which occurred. Yeah, this pl pretty much played out exactly how I thought, um, but I didn't picture in my head how epic the scene was. Yeah. Uh, the, the hound and the mountain took each other out. Mm -hmm. Very, um, well, very... I, I wouldn't even say that. I, I, I mean, the hound would have probably been mortally wounded from the crushing of the skull and such, but the hound definitely took the mountain out. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, they both fell off of like a... 300 story building yeah. into fire. Um, and, and then that building fell down and probably crushed them. So, yeah, <laughs> crushed the burnt corpses. <laughs> so, yeah, they're dead anyway. as fuck. And I got both of those right. So. Uh, I got them both right, but the mountain I picked for white because I figured that was one of the things that would be revealed and that did not occur. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was kind of already like, you know, not alive. Rich, which is, yeah, which, which, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Um, yes. Then we have Samwell, Tarly, Gilly, and Little Sam. I said they're all going to live. So did I. And we all, both of us got the points for yep. that. Uh, Lord Varys, I thought for sure, would live to the end. Mm. Wanted nothing but the best for the realm. He was not selfish in any way, did not want anything for himself. So I thought he would live. I was sorely mistaken. Uh, I knew he would die. <clears throat> yeah. From so, previous prophecy of Melisandre, actually. So yeah. that one little throwaway line, I got both those right off that one line. So see, and that's yeah, I know, I know. You put all of your faith in that line. I remember very clearly her saying that, you know, we shall both die on this continent. That does not I mean, to me, that does not strike me as before this show ends, mm. by the end of next season, we will both be dead. Like I didn't read it that way. And it's yeah. just Mm, I don't. Yeah, I mean, but then again, why would why would you say that if you? But uh, that was in season seven, and season seven was the first of the compressed seasons, and you don't have a line like that if it's not going to mean something, if it's not going to yeah. manifest, because you're already cutting out all the fun dialogue. Anyway. I suppose. All right, so Brienne of Tarth, Davos Seaworth, and Bronn. Um, I I got all those wrong because I said that they were all going to die. Oh, neither of them, none of them did. I got Brian and Davos correct. I picked uh, Braun incorrectly. I, picked, I thought he would die. It's interesting that all three of those actually not only survived, but end up on the small council. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, Sir Podrick. Sir Podrick, as revealed within the last five minutes of the, of the entire episode. show. Yep. Um, member of the King's Guard, pretty cool. I liked that. That was one of the little things that I'm like, yep, that was perfect. Yep. Um, um, yeah, he, obviously, he lived. I said that he lived. So same I here. Point for that. Yep. Torment Giants Bane. I thought he would die. I almost thought he would become a white, and I, but I didn't mark it, and <laughs> that it didn't matter because he lived. So. Yeah, I thought he'd become a white as well. <laughs> so therefore, I got. No points for the same reason as you. <laughs> Grey Worm up next. I thought for sure he was going to die, uh, but he didn't. I knew he was going to... Well, I don't want to say I knew. I knew that either he or Masande would live, but not both. Masande wasn't on the list, and I picked yep. correctly. It was a 50-50, and I picked the correct one. Yeah. I. Uh, th this is one of those where I changed my mind immediately after episode two. Two, three, two, three, I think it was, two or three. I think we did this right before three. Yeah, we, we we did this before the Battle of Winterfell. Okay, right. And then the very next episode, I 
wish I had changed. Yeah, that. You, I wish you, I you had knew had you were wrong. Yeah. Yeah, because I thought she was because um, and and my prophecy kind of came true because she said, um, uh, you know, I I want us to go, you know, just leave here. I want us to go to Noth, where my people are from, and then um, we can protect them because they they're constantly being fucked with. Yeah. Well, so my Grey Worm's going to keep up on his part of the deal, but uh, the Sunday is not. So. Yeah, and that that was my prediction was that he would go there anyway to honor his love. Um, yeah, so Gendry is up next. Um, I, not only did I predict him to live, I also predicted him as sitting on the Iron Throne. He did not sit on the Iron Throne, but he is alive and well at the end of the show. Yes, I did not pick him for the Iron Throne either, though. So, um, How about Beric Dondarrion and Euron Greyjoy? <laughs> Uh, well, Euron's dead as fuck, and I think everyone with any kind of brain knew that he was going to die. Yeah. Uh, so I got that one right, of course. Uh, Beric, I also said he was going to die. However, he mm. didn't turn into a white, so I got no points for that. That would have been too poetic for uh, D&D to write into there. So Yeah. Um, yeah. I, got, I got both those right, that they were both going to die. So, yeah, um, and uh, remind <clears throat> me, Throne? Hmm? Remind me who you put on the throne. I put Tyrion on the throne. Ah. So if there was partial credit on that one, I'd be well ahead of you. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I was thinking if someone had put Bran in there, would we give credit or would we not? Because <laughs> the it, question does... reads, who holds the Iron Throne at the end? I mean, technically he holds the Iron Throne. It's no longer a throne. It is still iron. I mean, yes. I mean, it's like a iron puddle, yeah. iron pile. We I mean, need you... we, we need to fast forward uh, about a hundred years to see Bran still sitting there as king because he, now he's the three-eyed raven, so he's ageless essentially. And um, also, what did they do with the with the, the that puddle? Did they leave that there, and now he just reels wheels in on that. Like, what's going on there? Yeah, I mean, it's probably now a ramp. Right. <laughs> the stairwell. It's, now, and, uh, it's, now, it's now Westro's first handy ramp. <laughs> yeah, that should our, our clue. That's probably foreshadowing that he was going to be the king because, um, yeah. Uh, what do you think, man? What do you think of the the finale of the ultimate episode of Game of Thrones? I enjoyed it. I thought it fit very nicely. It was a nice, tidy wrap-up. It left plenty of open strings to go in many other directions. Um, it was not the departed Westeros style, so I'm happy about that. Uh, right. right. That was a genuine concern of mine, that they'd basically be uh, one main... Like, Brand or Samuel would be the last remaining named character on the show. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, no, I, I, th I thought it was great. How about you? Uh, dude, I, I liked it a lot. Um, it it saddens me at how upset like ninety percent of the people on social media are with this episode mm -hmm. and with all of season eight together, and and some people even extend that into season seven. Like the last two ep seasons have been trash. Um, but mostly uh, that's not super common. The the big thing that is really common though is that. I wasted the last decade of my life on this trash. Well, then that's your fault. Right. Man, fuck you. Don't, you know, whatever. Um, I, I don't know, man. Um, even if you don't like season eight, don't be mad. You got seven seasons of excellence. Life's a journey, not a destination. Like if you enjoyed yeah. the first five and didn't enjoy the last three, then fuck it. You still, I mean, you're still sitting better off than half. Yeah, and if you didn't like the last three seasons, but then why were you still watching anyway? Right. Like you should have stopped two and a half seasons ago. <laughs> That's on you, buddy. Yeah, uh, um, I, I just uh, I saw a in, very interesting link, and I think I think um, uh, shit. I think Tensor Guy sent it to Brian Brushwood, who retweeted it, and that's how I saw it. Was an article about. Uh, going from a sociological concept to a psychological concept. And that really broke it down why it changed so much and why it was harder to de describe towards the end what was going on. And uh, it, it, I retweeted it, I believe. So check my Twitter at Ethan Kane if you want to read about that. But it was very interesting and it fell right along with what I was already thinking and to put some science behind it. 
and I still enjoyed it, man. There's just you're gonna have the the hardcores that are that wanted something more. They wanted their own personal thing because you know they subscribed to some whatever whatever on the old interwebs. Um, I I thought it was great. Um, I'm glad I suffered through season three. <laughs> See, um, I, it, it's interesting to to listen to you and Jenny especially talk about like painfully watching like hate watching certain episodes or seasons or whatever dude i i had a nerd boner during every minute of every episode of this entire run of the series mm. i loved this show um mm-hmm. and i i love 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 the books and i cannot wait for uh, the forthcoming uh, winds of winter and you shouldn't have to wait very long about four months uh, i think that's going to be released yeah, that's, that's, you've been predicting that for quite a while now for um for like ever <laughs> yeah so I, I hope so man i hope you're right i really hope you're right it, it's gonna be great i, uh, I did I, I, I did not take into, into into account the rewrites that george r, r. martin is going to have now that he's seen the reaction of people to the tv show so I don't think yeah. that's a thing, but there might be no. a couple little I things think that's here. Trash. No, I think that's trash. I don't think so. Um, one prediction that I have, though, is uh, so the, as we leave the characters in the books, Jon Snow is dead. Like, he just died uh, from the mutiny mm. at the wall. He just died. I don't think he's going to be resurrected in the books. I think that oh. was a, a David and Dan fucking... Yeah, we like Kit Harrington a lot. Let's keep him on the show. Let's figure out a way. Uh, and I believe the the role, uh, like that, we see John going through, uh, you know, big picture wise, like with Daenerys and everything. I think that role in the books is going to be uh, filled by Young Griff, which you're probably like, who the fuck is Young Griff? Because he did not appear in the show at all. Right. Uh, he is Egan Targaryen. Yeah. So we we shall see. Uh, that's the one. I have other uh, thoughts and theories about where the books are going, uh, but that's my that's that's my tidbit for the week. Jon Snow is dead. Young Griff is going to fill that role. If book two and into book three wasn't so laborious, I would reread starting from the beginning. <laughs> and... See, this is one of those things where I. I Dude, I loved every word of every book. I, even when I was reading the books before I watched, I watched season two. I just, I never, I, God, I just hated Rob. Just the character, the way he's written, like the way he's acted on the TV show is exactly as dull as the way that I perceived him in the books. So until people, until Jenny started saying how dull it was and how boring that whole storyline was, I just thought that was the books. See, well, the thing about the books is Rob's barely in the fucking books. The, the, the whole like showing like the show showed a lot of like him planning his battles and all that shit. Right. No, none of that fucking happened. We knew about his battles because somebody would be reading a scroll from a raven. Yep. That oh, the young wolf won another battle. It, it, oh that, no, that is the case until until he meets um what's her name, which is different in the books. His, Jane Westerling. Yeah, his 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 bride and instead of Talisa in the show. Yeah, it, which it, I I actually I I watched an interview with George R. R. Martin uh, probably about a week ago, and he was talking about uh, Jane Westerling and like how the you know how David and Dan decided to to change that character and what his thoughts were on it, and he was a little confused as to why they wanted to change the character and uh one of the actually the only he was he finally like was like you know what fine if you want to change the character then whatever (laughs) weirdos go ahead and change the fucking character my only request though change the character's name because they have so Talisa's from uh, what Volantis or something like somewhere in Essos. Yeah, she's from Essos. That's all I know. Entire different, entirely different backstory. Where Jane Westerling in the book, uh, the woman that that Rob marries, uh, is from a family a, a lower house that's a, a bannerman of the Lannisters, mm-hmm. 
and like it's a whole thing and that's in her name Jane Westerling that is a that is a Westeros name yeah that is a uh like uh uh it's a regional um, name yes exactly so to make her from Volantis like you got to change her name that was yeah. George's only uh, stipulation with that. And, of course, they changed her name. So Yeah, and honestly, the whole thing about him marrying a lady from a lower house was far more interesting than how Talisa was displayed on the TV show anyway. Right, yes. Like, it's they, so they, much more interesting. They, they took the, the boring, the most boring part of the story and made it even more boring. And they cut out, and, and this probably just shows how much I, I enjoyed the Aria chapters, but they took the Aria chapters that I thought were amazing and they trimmed mm. it down to like four or five scenes. Yeah. You yeah. know? And I was, I was like, fuck man, that's, that's, well, that's the funner part of this. And they, but they concentrated on the Rob part. So they, they, add, they, they, they took out Aria, added Rob and I, I, I would rather right. have the other way around, like read more Rob scrolls and show more Aria. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I get that, but the story, Arya's story arc, I'm surprised they did as well as they did in the TV show with that, because there's a lot going on in the books that is really hard to translate to a screen. Yeah. Uh, like, it, the, the things that she was doing in disguise, and the, the thoughts that she had about, uh, am I Arya Stark, or am I no one, and, and all, you know, and all of that, and she desperately wanted to be no one, but couldn't let go of Arya Stark. Um, a lot of that's hard to. I'm surprised they they portrayed it as well as they did, um, especially when she was struck blind. Uh, in the books, you see a lot of this from her point of view of like darkness, and and it it focuses on what she hears and things like that. And yeah, it's a really hard thing to pull off in the show. Well, and uh, I don't want to meet. I don't mean mean to meet. Ah. Words. <laughs> words. I don't. Are hard. Yeah, I don't mean to conflate the two, but that's one of the things that I did not like about the um, uh, Twilight movies, because <laughs> in the fourth book, it's about halfway through the book. Um, uh, uh, what the hell's her name? The main chick. I have no idea. I've never seen even a, a trailer for those movies. Yeah. It, Bella. Bella is incapacitated she's under duress in in a particular way um the point of view it goes from second person bella to second person jacob and goes through a transformation of his own and that was one of the mo more interesting parts of the book and for the movie they completely cut all that out to make it just like two scenes where it's basically wolves running through the forest and voiceovers. And it was, it just completely dumbed it all down and made it bullshit. Um, yeah. I think you, uh, when, when you say second person, what do you mean by that? So first person is I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. Third person is as if you were watching it on TV Seeing the person's he said, actions. He said, she said. Yes. And the second person is from the character's point of view, but not in the character's, like from the, no. from the nope. character's point of view. Sec second person is the narrator speaking to the, the audience saying, you are standing in a room and you hear this thing. Then fourth person. Fuck, I don't care. <laughs> 17th person. Yeah. Um, uh, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, um, yeah. Uh, speaking of, of twilight though, the, uh, um, what's, what's the actor, the male, like the main male actor in twilight? Um, shit. Uh, Pattinson, so, Robert Pattinson. Pattinson. Yes. He's Batman now. Right. And people are all pissed off about that too. Yeah, I have no idea. I've never seen this dude act. I know nothing about him except the fact that he was in Twilight. That's I, it. That's all I know about it. I would just really wish people would get over them fucking selves. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to watch Twilight, but I need to like look up clips or something. I need to see who this person is that's going to be playing one of my favorite fictional characters of all time. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend reading Twilight. 
Uh, I think the shows are decent. The first one kind of throws it off sync because they wanted to wrap it up in a single uh, single movie. They didn't realize that it'd hit popular and, and want to go into a series. So it kind of makes for an awkward jump. Uh, the books are fairly uh, consistent with the, well, the movies are fairly consistent with the book experience for the most part. The hard part about the books is who it's written for. It's written for teenage girls. Mm. If you've, if you're not or have never been a teenage girl, there is a perspective difference that you really have to get over. Because I tried reading them three times, and then finally my wife started reading them. I was like, "All right, I got to actually read these now," and read them. And I enjoyed them once I made that. Once I understood who the audience was and that I wasn't that audience, mm. um, it made the whole the whole thing was easier to get through and kind of just just churned along. And it's it's. In my opinion, I really enjoyed the story. The movies are are eighty percent of what's in the books. Um, so, but I'm not going to sit here and try to defend myself for being a Twilight fan. I enjoyed them and fuck off. <laughs> hey, uh, it sounds um, uh, kind of miserable. I mean, wait, wait, wait how, there were several of them, right? It's a series, so it's something Four. of a ritual to uh, uh, subject yourself to such a thing. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that was kind of like a ritual misery to me. Yeah, it, it really kind of was. Uh, I read all four of them back to back while in Korea. Uh, well, I mean, you were in Korea. We all did a bunch of weird shit in Korea. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I I read I read let's see I read all four books in between the third and fourth movie, and of course there was a fifth movie because he split the last one off into two. So that's that's where my perspective was. I was, I'd already seen. The first and second movie, I hadn't seen the third, but it was already out. Um, then I read all four books, then I watched the third movie, and then I went back home and watched the last two movies with the wife as they were released. So, all right. Well, I'm uh, I'm happy for you. I think. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, uh, if you want to, you want to read about the weird shit that I've got going on, you can go over to Twitter and find me at rm underscore del noche. And you can find me at twi- on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. You can find the show at Ritual Misery. And I'm sure Kent will tell you where you can find all the beer that he drinks while I flip over the tab and figure out what the fuck is going on right now. Oh, yeah. I, I drink beer. And uh, I like to uh, tell people that I drink beer uh, over at Untapped. Uh, <laughs> If you, too, are an alcoholic, go to <laughs> Untapped <laughs> and find me. My, I'm, I'm Del Noche over there. I'm, in fact, I'm Del Noche or Del Noche 77, pretty much anywhere on the internet. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, or you can just go over to ritualmisery.com. Yeah. And uh, there's links to, like, pretty much anything that Amos and I do over there. Yep. And uh, cruise on over to Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening. For me, for Kent, for you, this has been your Ritual Misery podcast. See ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. I love that so much. Hey, uh, while I was doing my little Diamond Club symbol and looking at the camera trying to be all super still, I realized I was blinking, which led me to the memory that... Um, do you remember the dude's name? The guy that was, the, that was blinking torture on the Vietnam tapes? You know, the POW that was in her... Doing the oh, as he was talking, he was uh, Morse coding. Yeah, um, the word torture. Uh, he just I, he just died this last week. Oh wow! Yeah. So, mm. um, just real quick, uh, if you haven't already, and I'll leave this on the show so people can hear it. If you haven't recently, just give a moment, uh, think of vet, or uh, have a moment of clarity about uh, the fact that there are many people that have done really crazy shit and put up with a lot of stuff so that we can spend all of our money and build our debt uh, until our eyeballs bleed. So thank you to all those who served before and all those who are serving from Ritual Misery.
hundred percent, man. Um, uh, especially those that gave, uh, the ultimate sacrifice, uh, this, this weekend is Memorial day weekend, uh, where, yeah, I, I want to echo Amos's sentiment there. Uh, just take a moment, even if, if, if you're not comfortable or don't want to think of that personally, you know, that's fine, but just, just give us some thought, think about, uh, you know, what, why we have some of the things that we have and a lot of it, whatever, right? Like me and Amos, our, our contributions to this whole thing might not have given you anything, but somebody's did somebody's contribution did. And I don't know, just take a moment, um, get a little humility, a little humility. Uh, it's always a healthy, healthy thing. 